The initial additional revenue created is modest, approximately $210 million, which is just over 2% of current official revenue estimates. It also roughly matches the amount of our current structural imbalance, meaning that with these changes, state government will again be living within its means. That's a good thing. And in the long term, because we will finally have a 21st century tax code tied to a 21st century economy, additional revenue will be generated as the economy grows. Finally, a word about process. Representative Rick Rand, who is here with us today, who is chairman of the House Appropriations and Revenue Committee, has agreed to introduce this legislation in order to begin the discussion. And I understand that the committee will hold hearings to receive input from the public. However, I am well aware that a proposal to amend our tax code is a politically sensitive matter, especially during an election year. I'm also aware that what needs to be a very serious discussion regarding tax reform could easily be turned into a political football to be used by political parties in the upcoming elections. I am determined to avoid that possibility. Therefore, I will not ask either chamber to vote on any bill containing these provisions or any version thereof, unless a consensus has been reached by a majority of both chambers, which will assure the bill's passage. This process is not new. This process proved successful in our efforts in the 2013 session to resolve our unfunded public pension liability. And in my opinion, it is the only approach which offers any opportunity for success with tax reform. 